keeping an eye on imaging. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. Good day and welcome to uh, Jack Imaging at CVM. Uh, my name is Tom Marwick. I'm one of the associate editors at Jack Imaging, and I'm here with Dr. Ram Tula from USC. Welcome, Dr. Ram Tula. We're here to discuss a very interesting and important paper that's a sub-study from the C study about the issue of pressure recovery and its importance in clinical evaluation of aortic stenosis. Dr. Ram Tula, you wrote the editorial about this paper. Can you tell us a little bit more about what the paper's about and why it's important? The paper uh, deals with pressure or calculation of really when you wanted uh, aortic stenosis. And they point out that you have to take pressure recovery into account. And mostly they then talk about is, which is the best way to do that. And they go back to a concept uh, originally not originally put forward, but a way of calculating that by keeping the size of the aorta, mm -hmm. ascending aorta into account, because that determines it. And then they develop what is called the energy loss index. Mm -hmm. They showed that at least in the, when you're doing this by echo Doppler, that this is best calculated at the sinotubular junction and not at the valve at the sinuses or even distal ascending aorta. Mm -hmm. And the very interesting part about that is that the value that they came up with uh, is very similar, is in fact identical to what we have been using for the last 40 odd years mm -hmm. uh, to uh, determine aortic valve area. Uh, and this is not effective orifice area, which is where a Doppler it has been calculated, it means it's being done at the opening of the valve and therefore ignores everything beyond it. Okay. And the value that they came up with is uh, 0.6 centimeter square per meter square or less, mm -hmm. uh, which is identical to what has been used mm -hmm. uh, since the 70s and 60s for severity or stenosis by cardiac atherization. And if cardiac atherization is properly done, then the aortic pressure should be measured about three centimeters beyond the aortic valve. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about all of this, in my view, is not uh, pressure as much as energy. Yes, okay. So really we have here two potential means of assessing aortic stenosis severity in terms of area or gradients, either corrected or uncorrected for pressure recovery. And the argument here is that we have been overestimating the severity of aortic stenosis by not accounting for pressure recovery. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yes, but I like to think of that, uh, the whole concept and the physiology behind it in terms of energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the important reason uh, for the left ventricle to exist mm -hmm. without aortic stenosis and in aortic stenosis to perfuse the body. Mm -hmm. sure. That's what is it. So the question really one should think about, I think about, is what is the energy that is required to perfuse the body? Okay. So the Obviously, other... it has to get past the valve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. there is little or no energy loss uh, in terms of loss of energy, and I'm talking of different forms of energy, mm -hmm. getting the blood across a normal aortic valve. Mm -hmm. So we're used to the validation of um, aortic stenosis severity on the basis of area as originally validated by the Mayo Group now, now a couple of decades ago. Um, how, how does this information jive with, with, what, with that original description? Well, the trouble with that has always been that the, they start off by looking at the world from the echo lab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mean that's wrong? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm sufficiently old. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some people think too old and about to fall off the edge <laughs> soon. Uh, like to look at it in terms of the patient. Okay. Okay, so the issue is for the patient, 
what is important in for the patient and the function of the left ventricle is to perfuse the body. Okay. And so if one looks at it from that way and you go back to before the Mayo data, you go back to initially by Gene Brownmore in 1963 when he determined or deduced that a 50 millimeter or greater gradient. But of course, at that time, it was cardiac catheterization, so it was between the left ventricle and the ascending aorta. Uh, and then subsequently, since uh, at that time, most of the aortic stenosis was really congenital, mm. and there were children, so one had to correct that for body size. And if you correct that for body size, then it turns out it's 0.6 centimeters square per meter square, exactly with the same level as now Eli has come up with, Eli being energy loss index. And that actually goes back to, yes, that's what Gene Brownwell said. It's amazing how, how correct he was mm -hmm. 40 and 50 years ago. So uh, but the, the issue is that the natural history studies prior to valve replacement is what the issue is, what it was. The, that's never going to be done. Mm -hmm. So it's nice, really, that we've gone back to a full circle here yes. with, with this uh, description. So um, in, in summary, this, this is an approach of, of correcting uh, an inherent error in the way that we've assessed aortic stenosis severity by taking into account the ascending aorta. Uh, and it's something that has now been applied in a large population in the C study. And, it's something I think clinicians should have an interest in and, and think about correcting yeah. in particularly well, various scenarios. Yeah, and they conclude that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that makes a whole lot of difference if you do it that way, because a lot of what they pointed out was calculated as severe arsenosis isn't so if exactly. you do it this way. Exactly. And so one is making an error. Exactly. Uh, and I think it will be nice if we, we, if we get to where we do it as energy loss index. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that does take into account <clears throat> the issue of, you know, the, what is the energy that has been required eventually to perfuse the body. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, Dr. Amtula. I think uh, this is a very uh, important paper. It's something that uh, clinicians should have an interest in, and I would uh, commend it to you. Um, so thank you for joining us on Jack Imaging.